hari bersubuh. Tonight on First at Nine this Monday, the 22nd of April, 2024. To be inquired, two race car drivers arrested over Fox Hill Supercross accident yesterday. Separate investigations to be carried out by the police and army. Infested, rice stocks to be distributed for school meals program, infested by pests, says the Public Health Inspectors Union. Taking off. Six companies respond to requests for proposal of Sri Lanka Airlines divestiture. Finalized bidders to be announced, says the state-owned enterprises restructuring unit. Positive trajectory. Tax revenue for first three months exceed targets, says the state minister of finance. Sri Lanka's consumer price inflation, meanwhile, drops to 2.5 percent in March. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labadat Hacker. This is Adhaverna First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Other Darana First at Nine. Hope you had a great weekend. I'm Aditya Adri Singh joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now in your top story tonight, the drivers of the two race cars involved in the tragic accident that claimed the lives of seven people at the Fox Hill Supercross yesterday were taken into police custody by the Diyatalab police. The Bandarul Magistrates Court ordered that they be placed in remand custody until the 30th of April, pending a police investigation into the incident. In the meantime, the Army spokesperson revealed that the Army, one of the event's co-organizers, had also initiated an internal investigation of its own. The 28th edition of the Fox Hill Supercross was interrupted yesterday after an accident claimed the lives of seven people, among whom was an eight-year-old girl. During the final race of the day, two race cars veered off and crashed into a group of people beside the track. Reportedly, the group had jumped over the protective barrier and had gathered at the edge of the track to observe a car which had overturned during the previous lap. The incident resulted in the deaths of four race officials and three spectators, among whom was an eight-year-old girl. The incident also left 23 people injured. Twelve of the wounded are currently receiving treatment at the Diyatalava base hospital, while six others are under the care of the General Hospital in Badulla. The tragic incident occurred despite assurances given by the event's organizers as to the safety measures implemented to ensure the safety of the spectators. What's the guarantee you are giving to the spectators for their safety? Of course, the safety is at, of utmost importance to all of us, organizers and the military academy both. So, spectator zones have been specially demarcated. As you know, uh, Fox Hill has a huge area for normal spectator uh, around the Pine Tree Corner. Then we have a grandstand and the normal high price ticket viewing area. All those are in a very safe and elevated area. And the paddock hill is there. So, the general public are well protected. They are on an elevated area on the track for spectator safety we have uh, done the best we could and it's safe. As for drivers, the track was resurfaced and tire barriers are in place and wherever necessary there will be foil. However, following the incident, the efficacy of the safety measures were called into question. According to the Army spokesperson, the Army, one of the event's co-organizers, has initiated an internal investigation into the incident while a separate investigation has been launched by the Diyatalava police. Accordingly, the drivers of the two race cars involved in the incident were taken into police custody today while they were receiving treatment at the Diyatalava base hospital. The Bandaravela Magistrates Court ordered that they be placed in remand custody until the 30th of April. Can you feel it? New Dulux Pentalite Hygiene Plus. Refreshing walls for generations. Dulux, Dulux, Dulux. Now, Chairman of the Public Health Inspectors Union, Upul Rohana, says 50% of the stocks of rice which were to be distributed among schools for the school meal program 
are pest infested. Meanwhile, the secretary of the Ceylon Teachers Union questioned the reason behind the delay of the distribution of rice by months, given clear instructions to use up the stocks before May. Meanwhile, in a press release, the presidential secretariat confirmed that the government warehouse in Veyangote, where the rice stocks were stored, only issued rice stocks deemed suitable for human consumption. The stocks of rice provided by the World Food Programme for this initiative were stored within a government warehouse in Bayangoda. Prior to distributing the stocks of rice to schools and facilitating the special programme, health authorities inspected several samples of the stock. Upon inspection, the Public Health Inspectors Union revealed that half of the stock in question is unfit for human consumption. Medical officers of the Bayangoda MOH and Public Health Inspectors inspected the stocks of rice stored in the warehouse and subsequently halted the distribution of the stocks to schools temporarily. Adhering to the instructions of the government analyst, we collected over 1,000 samples of rice. The reports of those samples were handed over to the Veyangada MOH office two days ago. The government analyst's report indicates that over 50% of those rice samples were pest infected. Stocks of rice and lentils unsuitable for human consumption were identified and destroyed. Within the next few days, we intend to hold a discussion on the future steps to be taken in this regard with health officials, officials of the Ministry of Education and the Presidential Secretariat. Many schools lodged complaints regarding the stocks of rice and lentils during the recently concluded school term. The entire purpose of this special initiative will be lost if we aren't able to provide school children nutritious meals. Furthermore, if we provide school children with meals unfit for human consumption, we will expose them to short-term and long-term health risks. We would like to bring those matters to the attention of those government officials responsible in this regard. Meanwhile, the Ceylon Teachers Union highlights that this issue arose due to persistent delays in the distribution of the stocks of rice to schools. These stocks of rice were received in December. They are trying to distribute those stocks now. The packaging clearly outlines that the stocks have to be used before May. Why did they delay the distribution of rice by several months? They say that children deserve the best and then go on to give them pest-infested stocks of rice. A comprehensive investigation must be launched into this matter. Responding to these severe allegations, the Presidential Secretariat in a press release said the Veyangoda warehouse complex has only issued rice stocks deemed suitable for human consumption by the expert committee appointed by the Gampa Divisional Health Services Director for distribution in the school meal program. The statement went on to say that the committee has provided relevant recommendations relying on analytical reports from the government analysts department and the medical research institute. The president's media division reported that as per protocol, the stocks of rice are released to schools after its suitability for human consumption is ensured by the senior officer from the provincial department of education and a public health inspector representing the relevant province. Now, leader of the Samagi Janabalavege, Sajid Premadasa, drew attention to the current tensions in the political arena and claimed that it is rife with conspiracies aimed at securing power. The opposition leader went on to say that he will not be a part of any such conspiracies. The 161st edition of the Sakwala program was held at the Migas Ara Mahavidyale Virakhatiya Hambantuta under the patronage of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. Take a look at the recent political news. There is a huge fight to secure power and positions. Extraordinary conspiracies are underway at the moment to achieve various political ends. The passion that they have to secure power does not exist to uplift Sri Lanka's education sector. They launch conspiracies to oust certain people from positions of power, while other conspiracies are launched to bring people into positions of power. Their power hungriness is the cause of all those conspiracies. Many say that I had a very lucrative opportunity to become the country's prime minister. Yes, in fact, I did have such an opportunity. However, if I had accepted that responsibility then, I would have had to protect all the corrupt individuals who misappropriated appropriated public property. No matter how lucrative their political offers are, I will never be a part of such deals or conspiracies. I will agree to any deal that takes this country out of crisis. However, that deal will not be with the inept politicians of this country. I will make that deal with the 22 million strong population of this country. Now in other political news, Acting General Secretary of the SLFP, Dushmanta Mitrapala, notified the Election Commission today of the recent appointment of Dr. Vijay Dasu Rajapaksha, President's Council, as the party's acting chairman. 
Dr. Vijay Das Rajapaksha was appointed to the office of the acting chairman subsequent to a decision being made to that extent at the SLFP's executive committee meeting held yesterday. Now, in sharp criticism of that decision, senior vice chairman of the SLFP, Mahinda Sirivardhana, revealed that legal action will be filed against former President Maitri Palasi Rusena and the party's acting general secretary, Dushmanta Mitrapala, over yesterday's purportedly illegal executive committee meeting. Adhering to a decision taken by the SLFP's Politburo over the weekend, its executive committee convened in the morning yesterday at Atulkote. During the executive committee meeting, Minister of Justice Dr. Vijay Dasarajapaksha was appointed as the acting chairman of Sri Lanka Freedom Party. The party constitution clearly stipulates that parliamentarians who are also members of the party can attend the SLFP's executive committee meeting. Pursuant to those provisions in the party constitution, Dr. Vijay Dasu Rajapaksa and I have attended this meeting. It is crucial for the SLFP to prepare for the upcoming presidential election. The SLFP now has the chance to embark upon a new journey uniting everyone. The party and the country will be revived if we embark on a successful journey together. I hereby promise that I will make the SLFP victorious in any future election. Subsequently, Acting General Secretary of the SLFP, Sarathi Dushmant Mitrapala, informed the Election Commission today of the recent appointment of Dr. Vijay Dasaraja Paksha as the party's new acting chairman. Against this backdrop, several factions within the SLFP expressed their opposition to the appointment of Vijay Dasaraja Paksha as the new acting chairman. How can someone from another party, who has always stood against the SLFP and obtained ministerial portfolios, be appointed as the acting chairman of the SLFP? That decision was taken by the same faction of the SLFP, which criticized its own members for accepting ministerial portfolios. However, those members never left the party. Nimal Siripala and his faction have never contested under any party besides the SLFP. Therefore, it is advisable to hold discussions with him and come to a policy decision as opposed to working with those who have worked against this party for over 15 years. We are against that decision. Former Chairman Maitri Pala Sirisena can be held contempt of court for participating in the Executive Committee meeting. Similarly, the Acting Secretary of the SLFP too has acted in contempt of court. We will take this matter to court in the future. Further, in a previous SLFP Politburo meeting, Nimal Siripala de Silva was appointed as the Acting Chairman of the SLFP. Nobody has objected to that decision in court or otherwise. Therefore, he is the Acting Chairman of the party. Meanwhile, amid the escalation of tensions outside the SLFP headquarters yesterday, one person was arrested for attempting to break police barriers placed at the premises to restrict movement. The arrestee was later released on bail. The legal matter on the procurement of substandard vials of human immunoglobulin was once, to, was once again called up at the Maliga Khanda Magistrates Court with all nine of the defendants produced before the court. Submissions made by the counsel for the former health minister, Kheli Rambukwala, that his client should be granted bail in view of the fact that no evidence had been led against him were rejected by the magistrate who also ordered that the, that the defendants be further remanded until the 6th of May. The legal matter on the import of substandard human immunoglobulin was taken up today at the Maligakanda Magistrates Court. All nine suspects of the case, including former Health Minister Kehelia Rambukwala, was produced before the court in person. Maligak and the magistrate, Lord Chaniyabe Vikrama, ordered the counsel for the defendants to submit any special grounds which would warrant the granting of bail to the defendants. 
Subsequently, President's Counsel Anuja Premaratna, appearing for the former minister, submitted that although his client was accused of aiding and abetting as well as conspiring in the procurement and distribution of substandard human immunoglobulin, no evidence against him had been submitted to court as yet. He urged the consideration of that fact as special grounds for his client to be granted bail. Responding to that submission, the Maligak and the magistrate stated that in the order issued by the court on the 14th of March, it had been clearly stated that the absence of evidence cannot be considered as special grounds for granting of bail. Following this statement, the counsel for the defendant alleged that he had not received the relevant order, which prompted the court registrar to be summoned. The court registrar revealed that one of the court records requested by the defendant's counsel had already been issued, while the other was still being prepared. The Deputy Solicitor General, Lakmini Giri Hagama, further submitted that a record of the court's order on the writ petition filed on behalf of the former minister had also been filed. Following the submissions made by the court registrar and the Deputy Solicitor General, the court expressed its displeasure at the Defence Council's claim and ordered that Rambukwala, as well as the eight other defendants, be placed in remand custody until the 6th of May. Now let's take a look at how some prominent political figures expressed their views on Dr. Vijay Dasar Rajapaksha's appointment as chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. <laughs> राजपक्षमंत्री दूर तहनम भी मटन में आवश्यक कारणों कारणा सुधारना मिला में मिला भी तीन निकल कारणा तो मैं मटन नहीं गई ने श्रीलंका निदास पक्षे तो मैं मेरे टा जाति कत्ते पक्षे देश प्रेविते पक्षे श्रीलंका निदास पक्षे जाति कत्व मतवादे कुडुपट्टन कल कुनुकोडी टे विसीकर पु चंद्रिका में तीन यात्र में पक्षे अनोटवाड़ा � प्रतिपत्ति वशिन देवार्षी अतर वेन सत्ति बुनात अवसान देगुल्लो मांडू है मतलब वो इनसा राज्य टप और आगत सीलंका ने दास पक्षी की न तत्ते वेना सेंड ना ये दास राज्य पक्ष समाप्त में है मतलब दूर रहेंगे वत वेला विपक्षी देश पाल ने टेक पीड़ now the April, the April Lyrids meteor shower, which typically occurs between the 15th of April to the 29th of April each year, is expected to be clearly visible in the northern sky over Sri Lanka at dawn tomorrow. According to scientists, the best time to view this, this celestial event will be between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. tomorrow. During this period, approximately 20 meteorites will be visible to the naked eye within an hour. There are a few meteor showers which typically occur within a year. One of the most prominent meteor showers among those is known as the Lyrids meteor shower which occurs in April. The meteor shower is called the Lyrids meteor shower due to its close proximity to the Lyra constellation. During the celestial event, we expect to observe approximately 20 meteorites per hour. The Lyrids meteor shower is typically active between the 15th of April and the 29th of April. The meteor shower will reach its climax either at midnight tonight or at dawn tomorrow. While the meteor shower should technically be visible after midnight tonight, the presence of tonight's full moon may obscure its visibility. Therefore, the meteor shower should be clearly visible between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. tomorrow in the northern sky over the country. This event can be observed with the naked eye. <laughs> Now, welcome back. A statement issued by the state-owned enterprise restructuring unit revealed that six companies responded to the request for qualification issued to potential investors for the acquisition of shares in Sri Lanka Airlines. Among the bidders are Malaysia's Air Asia Group, Fitz Aviation of Sri Lanka and Haley's. <coughs> Additionally, Darshan Elite Investment Holding Private Limited, Sharisha Technologies Private Limited and Treasury Republic Guardians Limited have also expressed interest. The State Owned Enterprise Restructuring Unit will evaluate the responses to the quali select qualified investors. Furthermore, the International Finance Corporation, serving as transaction advisors for the divestiture of Sri Lankan Airlines Limited, will continue to provide guidance to the government.
Now, State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbalapitiya says that in the first three months of the year, major government revenue generating entities have exceeded the expected targets and generated an income of 834 billion rupees. He also said the government targets a total revenue of 4,106 billion rupees and expects to find 93% of that through tax revenue. In 2024, the government expects revenue of 4,106 billion rupees, of which 93% is tax revenue. We expected a total income of 787 billion rupees from three tax collecting entities. But we were able to collect 834 billion rupees, which is 47 billion rupees more or 6% more than the target. The Inland Revenue Department had a target of 381 billion rupees. They collected 430, which is a 13% increase. For the customs, we gave a target of 353 billion rupees for the first three months and they have achieved 100% of that target. The excise department, however, came in short. We gave a target of 53 billion, but they could only collect 51 billion rupees, which is 96% of the target. Now in other news on the economic front, Sri Lanka's national consumer price inf index inflation eased to 2.5% year-on-year in March from 5.1% in February. According to the Census and Statistics Department, the decrease was mainly contributed by the easing of the non-food prices during the month. The Department of Census and Statistics revealed in its latest report that the National Consumer Price Index for the month of March 2024 was recorded at 2.5% as measured by the year-on-year -year change. This is a decrease in comparison to the headline inflation of 5.1% recorded in February 2024. On a monthly basis, the year-on-year -year inflation of the food group remained unchanged in March 2024 at 5%, which was reported in February 2024, and the year-on-year -year inflation of the non-food group decreased to 0.7% from 5.1% in February 2024. The month-on-month -month change was contributed by a decrease in food items of 0.95% and in non-food items of 1.12% respectively. The inauguration ceremony of the Ramayana Trail project was held yesterday in Colombo under the patronage of the Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Santosh Jha. This establishment, which includes a land bridge between Sri Lanka and India, aims to enhance bilateral relationships between the two nations as well as to bolster tourism industry of Sri Lanka. The project, meanwhile, includes all the places believed to be, to be associated with the Ramayana, such as Sigiriya, Ashok Vatika, a garden in the city of Norelia, which is believed to be the place where Ravana kept Sita captive, Ravana La Falls, Koneshwaram Temple in Trincomalee, and Durampula Temple in Bandaravilla. Speaking at the event, the Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka added that the project will bring many benefits to the communities along the alignment of this connectivity, but more specifically, it will make Ramayana and Buddhism and Buddhist tourism easier and more alluring to the people of both sides of the Indian Ocean. Now the Columbus Stock Exchange closed in green today aided by gains in financials and consumer staple stocks. The Columbus Stock Exchange All Share Price Index was up by 0.64% to settle at 11,828.22 points. LLC Finance and LLC Holdings PLC were the top gainers on the index rising 12.5% and 2.1% respectively. Trading volume on the ASPI rose to 114 million shares from 112.9 million shares in the previous session. The S&P Sri Lanka 20 meanwhile combined 0.94% to end at 3,481.89. The market's turnover fell to 1.3 billion rupees from 1.48 billion rupees in the previous session. Diversified financial sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the food, beverage and tobacco sector was the second highest contributor. Foreign investors were net buyers purchasing stocks worth 70 million rupees while domestic investors were net sellers of floating shares worth 1.28 worth billion rupees. Now, meanwhile, senior analyst of Capital Alliance Limited, Amrit Fernandez, joins us now with a few thoughts on the round off of our Markets in View segment for the week. Last week, largely influenced by profit taking, the domestic equity market ended the week with the ASPI down by 2.3% to 11,753, while the S&P SL20 declined by 3.4% to 3,449. Total market turnover grew 12% to 9.8 billion rupees, but the daily average turnover fell to 1.95 billion rupees, down from 2.9 billion during the shorter New Year week. 
Additionally, investor sentiment remains subdued due to uncertainty regarding the debt restructuring talks and rising tensions in the Middle East. Moreover, the March PMI released last week indicated expansion in the manufacturing and service sector.